So my name is Keith Whiteman. Um, I'm a, a dedicated family member today. Um, I'm a graduate of Evergreen State College and the post-prison education program. And, um, and I love my life today. Um, I think I was about five years old when I first remember meeting my father, my biological father. Is anybody familiar with the Goldfish Tavern up at Point Defiance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can remember, well, I'm 43, so five. That was a, this is when the Goldfish had a line of Harley Davidsons out front, right? Yeah. And that was the kind of place that the Goldfish was. And um, I just remember being down on the hill with my mom and my brother and my sister and my dad and my mom and my mom telling us, "Do you want to meet your dad?" And of course, I was, you know ecstatic to be able to meet my father. I had no father in my life. All I knew was my mother. Um, she pointed up the hill and said, he's up there. And me and my brother took off running and we met my dad. The first time I met my father, Harley Davidson's leather jackets. And this was my first vision of what it meant to be uh, a man, right? What it meant to be this was my male role model for the first time, right? Drinking alcohol, riding a Harley, wearing leather, and, and that's what it was, right? And this, and this vision was ingrained in my mind of what cool meant. What it was like was uh, the Marlboro Man and Harley Davidson, like, combined, right? So as I went through my life, I, I lived up to this expectation of what my father was. And eventually when I started visiting with my father and I was nine, 10, 11 years old and I was spending weekends with my father and I witnessed my dad um, cooking meth in the garage. He had Harley's strewn apart in the living room, uh, people in and out of the house. Um, that's the kind of environment that I grew up in on my father's side. And my mom was a different story. That's the, the half of me, I believe that saved my life um, in essence but so this is where my life went so I, I began to live my life like I had that vision of my father right so at I think I was probably it's hard to remember ages I'm getting kind of old now so it's really hard but I think I was about 12 years old when I tried meth for the first time and um, I smoked pot with my father when I was probably 11 and you know we played shot games with whiskey at about the same age. And that was kind of, um, that was life. That's why I wanted to go to my dad's every weekend in the summers, right? So that's what I did. And that left a lasting impression on the way that I lived my life for probably the next 12 years until I, until I started getting in trouble with the law, right? Um, he passed away but I continued his legacy um, and lived my life a certain way, which, you know, I'm, hesit I'm hesitant to continue, like, to come and, like, tell you my stories of trauma because I'm not, I'm sure you can all imagine the traumas that are involved with living a life uh, in that kind of a lifestyle. But needless, needless to say, I, I lived my life like that for a long period of time. And by the time I was 18, um, I caught my first prison sentence. Um, which at 18 years old, um, my brain wasn't even processing consequences and repercussions at that point in my life, right? But here I was um, looking at years in prison, which I ended up getting. Um, and I got an education while I was in prison and I'm not talking about a college education. It taught me how to come out and, and live my life that way. And, um, and I continued in that path. I continued over and over. Um, <laughs> Until one day, I think it was on my fifth prison sentence. Um, yeah, so this is, well, the story's not over. So <laughs> on my fifth prison sentence, I, I, it's so cliche, but uh, I found Jesus, right? Jesus found me, right? I found, I found religion. I got some spiritual uh, Well, I found I had to come to Jesus moment, right? And, um, and I got really involved in the church at Monroe Correction Center. 
and uh, we had an inmate ran service where there was a, a inmate pastor ushers like I served coffee for the first three months to the guys that were coming through and and uh, and I'd been praying and praying and praying and then one day Moses walks in <laughs> and Eldon Vale I think oh. <laughs> yeah and Eldon Vale and uh, uh, and Kimberly Mays and I listened through the whole the whole dog and pony show is what we, we ended up calling it after I've done like a dozen of them myself now as a dog and pony show we just come in and we spill our guts well this happened and uh, and I ran up to Ari and I said do you know what it feels like to be the answer to a prayer and he actually stepped back and put Kimberly in front of him <laughs> but um, and then me and Kimberly got to talking and and all I knew is my, my prayer was that I that, that God would put somebody in my life that would help me figure out some other way some other I knew that I wanted another life and I knew I was smart enough I just didn't know how to do it and I needed someone to hold my hand right so I prayed probably for two months straight that was my prayer and then they walk and here I am and and I'm like I get a phone number and this was before we had a toll-free number and um, and I'm calling I'm calling Ari's cell phone you know every other day blowing him up and finally he just said stop calling you're in we got you we'll figure it out just stop calling me okay and and this is this is kind of it's kind of how it works in this program like the squeaky wheel gets the grease the people the people that you know that's another story but um, so that happened and and I got out of prison and uh, the next morning after I'd gotten out of prison um, Ari was knocking on my door in person um, and it was time to go he goes get the car we got to go so we go to Pierce College um, my financial aid hadn't came through we worked with people at the school and I got an opportunity grant like things just happened we showed up we suited up we showed up and things came together and I think the next day I was in my first college class at Pierce College and things started looking up I was getting 3.8s 4.0s like I was getting great grades I was neglecting certain parts of my life and they'd come around and bite me in the rear end every once in a while you know um, and then I would get a handle on them and and then I would kind of uh, get complacent again and I went through this process where I didn't take my addictions and 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 my issues seriously enough and they come and they bite me in the rear end again right but through all of that through two treatment centers um, and, and quite a bit of trouble the program was always there like with unconditional positive regard and that's what this program's all about it's about people who've been through the same thing that I was going through then they've been through it right and that's where we gain our strength is we work with people who've also dealt with the same traumas and the same life issues that that I dealt with right and and of course it's on other levels but that's not the end of the story right um, I still didn't get it together it happened again okay so um, I went back to prison even after all of this right but seeds were planted I went to back to prison for a 10-year piece right and I got this special sentencing agreement where it was a drug offender sentencing alternative and I ended up having to serve about three and a half years but while I was incarcerated all the seeds that were planted by post prison education program and Moses back there started to grow when I touched down into the county jail again I had finally had the knowledge that I would gained through education right sociology psychology to process my own emotions and my own behavior and understand that the wreckage that I had created um, in my using that I suffered enough pain internal pain that it became a catalyst for change right with without the help of post prison education program I wouldn't have been able to gain those tools no one was gonna come knock on my door and say it's time let's go to school let's go let's get you enrolled and 
Well, so while I was incarcerated, um, on that next sentence, the sixth one, um, I was able to get my associate's degree, get certification in auto body, um, and, and I kept with, I programmed steadily the whole three and a half years that I was incarcerated, and I came out, and when I came out, post prison was there for me still, and instead of being, uh, I was still a student, but I was able to, through work study and through, um, well, you know, being a, pay, a paid, empl paid employee for a certain amount of time, I was able to work for the program for two years, uh, being a mentor and working in student services and doing the work that had been done for me before that. And this is a key thing, and I say it over and over, is the people who stay around the office, the people who come back and continue to work with other people coming out of prison and getting them into school are the people who succeed because their life is just centered around education and centered around recovery and centered around uh, success. So um, after that two years time, I was able to uh, transfer from Pierce College and I actually got my um, certificate in social service mental health and then I went on to Evergreen and got my bachelor's degree. Um, eventually I graduated Evergreen and uh, I got a job with Catholic Community Services and now I am working downtown in Olympia um, in this new program that Catholic Community Services started called Familiar Faces that works with the 25 highest utilizers of the emergency services down in the Olympia area where Tent City is and, and all of that stuff. So it's a pretty intense job and I find myself doing the exact same thing that I did at Post Prison Education and it's a brand new program so I can kind of I can, I, I have the flexibility to do what I did at post prison, but with this population. So I'm able to, um, I have, uh, we've gotten churches involved downtown Olympia. So like, uh, the, the, basically what I'm saying is the skills that I learned being a, a mentor at post prison education program, I've taken them into the field with me and I've been successful. You know, um, it's been great. Like the news followed me around and they were like, it was kind of a cool thing like what's happening down there but um and i don't i don't think because my story the first part of it is not it's not uncommon right it's 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 basically of the it's basically the story of 90 percent of the people that go to prison is um the environment that they were raised around and the influence that that had upon them in later life. So that's basically my story. And that's it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of a big deal too. That's kind of like the, uh, the, so the program is technically Catholic Community Services, but, um, and Ari loves this. Ari, Ari loves that I work with the Olympia Police Department. Um, but uh, he wants his junior deputy badge too, but he's got to do the work first. Um, so it's a collaboration between um, the Olympia Police Department and Catholic Community Services. So on a daily basis, um, I communicate with uh, Downtown Walking Patrol, which is like six officers. Um, the jail staff, I'm, I'm able to go into Thurston County Jail, um, Olympia City Jail, Lewis County Jail, uh, Nisqually, like all these jails, I get to go in there because in, es in essence, like um, the population that I work with, um, at any given moment, I'm bound to have three or four people that are in one of those jails. So now I can go into those jails almost at will when I, whenever my people end up in there um, and sit down and have a contact visit with them. Like I'm trusted enough in my life today to uh, go into a, you know, a prison and actually have contact visits with, with the people that I'm working with. And, and oftentimes I just go in there and listen because that's probably 75% of what's needed is just support in these things. So yeah. <laughs>